everyone and welcome to our service of morning worship on the 5th of July, the 4th Sunday after Trinity. This Sunday our service is coming from St Paul's Church at Overtablin, but because the government is now allowing ser church services to resume, uh, there will also be a service today at 9 o'clock at Holy Trinity and at 10 o'clock at St John's at High Lee. Full details of all our services and what's happening can be found on the website and on the update. As always, we are taking the Morning Worship at Home service book as the basis for our worship and if you haven't got one, you can download one from the website. A little later in our service, our Bible readings will be led by Chris Stanisrit and we thank her for her contribution to this service as indeed we thank all those who contribute, whether by singing or by reading or by bringing us into sessions or by reflections. It's been great to have so many people supporting us during this time of lockdown. So let's begin our service by singing the hymn Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you 
now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our psalm is number 145 and we're reading verses 8 through to verse 15. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his mercy is over all his creatures. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your mighty power. To make known to all peoples your mighty acts and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is sure in all his works and faithful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lift up all those who are bowed down. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We now go over to High Lee, where Chris is going to lead us in our Bible readings. Our first reading today is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 7, beginning to read at verse 15. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good <clears throat> dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh I am a slave to the law of sin. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, beginning to read at verse 16. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. 
Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Chris. And now Patricia is going to lead us in our reflection on the Bible readings. We like doing some of the puzzles in the paper at coffee time each day. This week, one of the clues was means of control. The answer was reins. Reins are used for controlling horses and keeping small children safe as they develop their walking skills. And I thought of the leads we use for Buster, our dog, as well. Having reins, a lead, or indeed a yoke, as is mentioned in our Gospel reading, enables the animal to be directed, as well as being kept under as much control as necessary. Those listening to Jesus in this rural area would have found it easy to tune into what he was teaching on this occasion, as oxen working in the fields would have been a common sight. Indeed, it is possible that Jesus himself, in his carpenter's workshop in Nazareth, was experienced at making yokes. There is an expertise here, and Jesus would have known about it. A yoke is made for a particular animal, which would have been taken to the carpenter who would make the yoke to measure and then it would be fitted with adjustments being made on a second visit. If an animal is to work well, the yoke needs to fit well. Then it will be light so that the labourer and the animal can work effectively together. So many people came to listen to Jesus because he spoke words of encouragement rather than criticism. He brought hope, and through healing, he brought new life to many. Of course, the Jewish leaders did not like him. Nothing would ever be right for them. They criticised both John the Baptist and Jesus, who had opposite lifestyles. The leaders felt their authority challenged, and they didn't care for it. The yoke the Jewish leaders placed on people was heavy. It was a burden. They despised the ordinary folk, the poor and the outcast, who could never manage to aspire to the depth of learning the Pharisees and scribes saw as necessary to know God. But knowledge on its own will not make anyone good. It is now nine months since Buster came to live with us and we have got to know each other better and better over that time. We are able to communicate well and understand his needs. He loves it when we go out for family work, walks, the three of us together or play throw and catch in the garden. He potters around the garden when we are busy there or sleeps under our desks if we're working at the computers. Spending time together has enabled us to know each other well. The same sort of thing can be the case for us as we develop our relationship with God. I wonder whether, despite the fact that our churches have been closed, you have come into a closer relationship with God during the past few months. Maybe you have been following the services, taking part in morning and night prayer each day, and maybe followed the Bible reading set for each day as well. Jesus knew God well and was able to reflect the Father to those around him, as well as to us through Scripture. This was because he spent so much time with his Father, Unlike the scholarship of the Jewish leaders, Jesus calls us to listen to his voice, learn from him, and do the things he does as we follow him. Jesus doesn't want us to be burdened. He knew how to make a yoke, 
and all his yokes are easy and light. He has work for each of us to do that is completely suited to our individual abilities. He doesn't ask more of us than we are able to give. Jesus calls each of us on the one hand to be ourselves, not trying to be someone else, and on the other hand to have a close relationship with him, and he will support us, provide everything for us, and show us the way ahead, even, or especially, when we face difficult times. Amen. Thank you, Patricia. Now we come to our intercessions and we're going to begin with the collect, the special prayer for today. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through, through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Faithful God, we pray for all people who try to follow your way in their lives. Let your church speak your word of truth with confidence and in unity, so that those who are searching and listening will be able to see and hear your message of love and peace clearly. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for peoples and nations whose troubles, brought about by the global pandemic, drown out your music of harmony and where the violent heat of anger seeks to destroy your word of peace. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly through the sins of violence, war and famine each day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for the people around us in our neighbourhoods and our places of work. Give us sensitivity and insight into their needs and vulnerabilities so that we may learn truly to love our neighbours as ourselves. Help us to be responsible and sensible in all our interaction with those around us so that we do not increase the chance of infecting or being infected by those we meet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for people who we know who are ill, anxious or bereaved, and for those who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. We pray that you will lead them and us in peace towards healing and wholeness of mind and spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we offer ourselves to you in faith and confidence. Show us as we go out into the world how we can best prepare ourselves to be part of your response to our prayers. Fill us with the spirit of life which was in Jesus Christ, your Son and our Saviour, so that we may live for you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we join together in the Lord's Prayer using the traditional words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Through our before our closing prayer, prayers, we're going to sing again. 
We're going to sing the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you, remain with you and with those you love, now and evermore. Amen. Amen.